I'm going to describe the equations that are used to predict the output of a voltage divider. A voltage divider is a very simple and useful direct current or DC circuit. Let me start with the basic potentiometer. A potentiometer is a resistor that has an optional tap on it. So this is called the wiper. And by moving the position of the wiper, we can measure an output voltage on that wiper relative to ground. So a typical, photo, uh, typical potentiometer has three connections, the source, V sub S, the ground, and then a wiper. And if we measure the voltage between the wiper and ground, we can have a variable. And by adjusting the knob or slider, we get a different output. The application here is in a sensor circuit where the sensor itself has variable resistance. So this could be a um, thermistor, which has a resistance that changes with temperature. It could be a photoresistor, a sensor that changes its resistance as you expose it to more or less light, or a variety of other types of sensors. So in that sensor circuit, we would have the same V sub S now connected to two discrete resistors. I'm going to call the bottom resistor RC and the top resistor RS. The R sub S is the sensor, and then we're going to connect this in a typical application on an Arduino to an analog input. And I'm calling it A0, but it could be any analog input pin. So this is basically a voltage measurement and analog to digital converter. And the reason for putting the resistance of the sensor on the top is often that we have a resistance that decreases with stimulus. So if this is temperature, and this is R sub S for a thermistor, the resistance, as you increase temperature, resistance goes down. Well, as the resistance decreases, the voltage at this point gets closer to V sub S. So we use this configuration when the sensor stimulus changes the resistance in a negative way. So R sub S going to zero, that is we decrease the resistance, that means that the output voltage, which is measured here, V out goes to V sub S. So this is a natural, um, this is a natural uh, sense that the increased stimulus means an increased voltage output. And I'll redraw my circuit with two constant resistances, uh, sorry, two discrete resistances, R sub S and R sub C. And I'm going to be thinking about measuring the voltage at that point, and I'm going to make the argument now, and I'll show that just a second why, just a few minutes why that's the case. But we're going to neglect the fact that if I touch this point with a voltage measuring device, that it doesn't change the circuit. So what that basically means is that the current flowing through these two resistors doesn't change when I make a voltage measurement. So what is the current here? So apply Ohm's law. V sub S is I times the total resistance. And the total resistance is just the sum of these two resistors, R sub S plus R sub C. Again, this is true because even though I'm making a measurement and touching another electrical circuit here, making another connection, the current only flows to ground. So I have a formula here that allows me to say the current, the total current, is V sub S divided by R sub S plus R sub C. I'll call that equation one. Now, just look at RC by itself. This is the constant resistance. So I've got a measurement point, constant resistance, ground, and I also have I flowing through it, and I'm measuring between this point and ground. I'm measuring 
V out. So apply Ohm's law one more time. V out equals the current, which is the total current flowing all the way from V source, same here, times RC. So this is, we call this equation two. Well, I have the I from equation one, and it's in terms of what we know, or at least what we want to be able to control, V sub S, R S, and R C. So now I put that I into this formula, V out equals, substituting V sub S, R S plus R C times R C, and just we simply rearrange V out is equal to V S, the this supply or source voltage times this ratio, RC over RS plus RC. Very simple formula, very useful. Note that RS, the sensor, is in the denominator, and as that resistance goes to zero, that is, the stimulus typically in a thermistor goes to zero, then we get back to V sub S because we get RC over RC. Very simple. In summary, this applies to either a potentiometer or a sensor circuit where the resistor is on top. No, we could switch these around. I could still put my, my sensor resistor in the bottom, and then I would just get a different formula. I would have RS over RC plus RS. It would behave differently. In all cases, we're measuring the voltage across the bottom, so our V out is measured relative to the center point or the, the junction between the two resistors and we have an analog input which we tap off that doesn't change the circuit. I'll show that in just a second. This is a simple formula. Uh, it's worth memorizing or certainly it's worth practicing this little derivation so you can do it again. So how is it that we can ignore the effect of the voltage measurement? Let me just redraw the circuit yet again. A resistor on top, a point at which we're measuring the voltage so R constant, Rs. So I'm measuring the voltage here. What would happen if I measured the voltage, if I touched it with some uh, probe or a wire, and the current, there was actually current flowing to that. So I is the total current. Let's suppose that some current actually leaks off this way. If some current leaked off that way, that would change the current across the lower resistor, and it would somehow affect the voltage here. Well, let's suppose that that current also eventually drains to ground. And I'm going to call this RD. And this is ID, the current. Well, in our, in a multimeter uh, that's well designed, and in a analog input circuit that's also well defined, designed, this resistance is essentially infinite. So if we have an infinite resistance along this path, then there is no drain voltage, uh, drain current. There's no current will go through here if this is an open circuit, for example, which is the limit of an infinite resistance. So the fact that there's no resistance here means that there's no loss of current through the measurement circuit, and therefore all the current flows through to ground through the both of these resistors in series. So if this is properly designed, infinite resistance, we can neglect the fact that it's there and ID is zero, and in that case, we just go back to the circuit that I've analyzed previously. Hope that helps.